Welcome back. You're tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso right here on SABC3. We're talking mosquitoes this morning. We're talking mosquitoes. Now, traveling through South Africa, especially over the festive season, the temperatures are hot. And also traveling to parts of South Africa, that's a very high risk of malaria can pose a very big health risk. Now, to get an update where we currently stand with regards to malaria, we have invited Professor Kelly uh, Chibale from the South African Research or South African Medical Research Council to join us and give us a couple of updates. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Lovely to have you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah. Such a pleasure, man. Such a pleasure. So um, holiday season, people's going to go out, family's going to go out, kids around, you know, but there's always, if you're going to be traveling to an area of South Africa, you know, that's got a high risk of malaria, there's a cause for concern as well. So which areas, firstly, if you can identify them, would be those high risk areas? So in South Africa, there are basically three main areas where malaria is, is, uh, is a problem. So it's um, uh, Mpumalanga, uh, Limpopo and KwaZulu Natam. Uh, and then also, more specifically, Limpopo, um, the districts that border the Kruger National Park, like uh, Vembe and Mopani, um, are very high risk uh, areas uh, for malaria. So, so, should people be traveling now uh, over the festive season, going to visit some of those places, the Kruger National Park? In your opinion, what would then be the best preventative measures to take? Well, first of all, um, the Deciding on which is the best uh, measures to prevent, of course, will depend on which region one goes to, uh, but also, secondly, what is the season uh, that mm. we, we're in. Um, and, of course, the, the, the best course of action is um, to go and see your doctor, because, first of all, your doctor will know exactly um, uh, the right medication, not just for the area that you're going into, because depending on which area you go really? into... Uh, different uh, drugs uh, can be used, uh, and that's because uh, the malaria parasite, the strains that give the disease, uh, vary. Um, there are different types of strains of the parasite. So the best uh, course of action is to go to, to the doctor uh, or a travel clinic that would know exactly for a specific area. It may be in South Africa it's the same strain, but yeah. one has to make sure uh, that uh, if they go to Limpopo or Mpumalanga or KZN, that the strain that is there can be treated with a particular medication. But the second reason for going to a medically qualified uh, person, which is your doctor, mm. is that they know your medical history. So oh, they see. will be able to make the right recommendation for the best medication that That's will awesome. suit you. And I didn't know that. I didn't know you get different strains. I, I guess it could be attributed to the different type of climates, the temperatures that they are kind of breeding in as well? Absolutely. Um, apart from um, at least five non species of the malaria parasite that causes malaria, mm. um, within a particular strain, uh, there are different types. Um, and of course, because of uh, uh, differences in the climate and, and, um, mm. and, and the genetic makeup, uh, those things can be very different. So it's really important to know specifically which strain of the parasite is causing a certain type of malaria Absolutely. in a particular region. So definitely can't stress enough that you need to go and make sure, go to your doctor if you're going to be traveling to a high-risk malaria um, area. We are going to be talking signs and symptoms and what you need to look out for in just a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Right, we are back and stepping into the wild, talking about mosquitoes and high-risk malaria areas in South Africa. We are joined by Professor Kelly Chibale from the South African Medical Research Council just to give us an indication of, uh, you know, where we are currently standing with regards to malaria and also what are some of the signs and symptoms that we need to look out for. So, Professor, on top of our chat uh, that we just had about, you know, the different areas in South Africa that we need to be aware of, should somebody, you know, go into an area and not have taken the necessary precaution, what are some of the signs and symptoms to look out for? Should should you have uh, contracted malaria and what should you do? So, so first of all, um, I can divide um, malaria symptoms into uh, two, well, depending on what type of malaria it is. So there's a malaria we call uncomplicated malaria. Um, and this is a very common type of malaria. And, yeah. and the typical symptoms that you will find is um, very high uh, temperatures, yeah. fevers, chills, uh, fatigue, you know, abdominal uh, discomforts, um, joint and muscle aches, and, mm. and sometimes vomiting. Sure. Uh, and that is actually often a consequence of what we call uncomplicated malaria. Okay. But if that is not treated, and the... Mm. Um, the which, could have, which could be mistaken for, like, the flu. 
completely agree. Yeah. And it's really important, uh, particularly in most parts of, you know, when, when you associate uh, uh, chills and fevers to a flu, that you could be mistaken, it yeah. could be malaria. So it's really important that um, if you've been exposed to malaria or been to a malaria region, you, um, yeah. that you be on the lookout for these symptoms. And another type of malaria we call severe malaria. So this is a progression of the uncomplicated malaria that then becomes severe malaria. Um, and the two typical symptoms of severe malaria uh, include a coma. So this is wow. basically cerebral malaria um, when the parasites get to the brain uh, and also very severe um, anemia. So it's really, really yeah. important that uh, any of these symptoms when they manifest themselves, yeah. that you really, really seek uh, medical attention. To know the symptoms as, as well. Yeah. How far has, have we come in terms of the fight against malaria? Have, have we seen an increase or a decrease over the last number of years? Where, we do, where do we stand? So if I look back to the last uh, five, 10 years, um, we've seen uh, significant progress thanks to, to, to advances in science and other interventions. Um, uh, for example, reducing the malaria deaths from uh, about a million people dying of malaria <coughs> 10 years ago to about half a million, which is still unacceptable. Yeah. However, what we see, and I think we see this quite often in, in South Africa, where at some points in our history, um, we've been able to contain the malaria epidemic. But because, of course, of the cross-border um, you know, transportation mm. of people moving across borders, that we can never be complacent. And I think we've seen uh, some recent increase in malaria cases okay. uh, in parts of South Africa and across the world. So I think it's a sign that we cannot uh, afford to be complacent um, yeah. uh, because malaria is always going to fight back. Uh, yeah. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. Is it, is it, do, you, do you think in our, in our future, is it possible to eliminate malaria uh, completely? It's not impossible. In fact, currently the agenda in the scientific community is working towards malaria um, eradication and elimination. Yeah. Now, of course, um, elimination uh, by simple definition means that you um, eliminate malaria. In other words, you destroy the, the parasite population yeah. pool from a particular region. But it doesn't mean it cannot come back. So that's yeah. elimination is just uh, confined to a region or a country. Mm. On the other hand, eradication, which is the overall goal, and it's not impossible, and I'll probably give you a couple of quick examples. Uh, ultimately, elimination um, is confined to a region, but eradication means that we completely wipe out the entire parasite population. And this is possible because now we have the tools and the interventions, which are several, uh, including uh, new medicines that are killing uh, yeah. the parasite at all the life cycle stages, yeah. that you not only have an impact on control, but also on yeah. blocking transmission. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. It seems that there is still a long fight ahead of us, but the fact that we can contain it at the moment, that, I mean, that is good news. Thank you very much for the updates and joining us this morning on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. So best advice is if you're going to be traveling to an area that has a risk of malaria, take those precautions, take those creams and citronella oils as well to try and, and uh, uh, eliminate or avoid from being getting bitten. And also make sure that you head to your doctor before you are heading into an area like that.